So there's there's a few areas of interest that I'd like to get into today. However, the first is quite pressing and it concerns the most recent events in Afghanistan with reports that the Taliban have now marched into Kabul. I'd like to get your initial thoughts and uh, reaction on this. Well, I'm demoralised like many other people. Um, uh, it, for all its faults, the international presence led by the United States, which has been there since overthrowing the Taliban, in 2021 uh, 2001 has changed i think for the better afghan society in many respects um girls now have opportunities which were denied them and particularly in education when the taliban were previously in power i mean the taliban was an incredibly brutal um regime the so-called islamic emirate which again they've declared after seizing kabul we now they said they've got an islamic emirate in place and also um, the 20 year international presence created opportunities um, for women to get employment opportunities, which were previously denied them. And we also shouldn't overlook the fact that while the Afghan government's army has not performed well, apparently given no solid resistance to the Taliban and uh, the president has ignominiously fleed from the capital instead of standing his ground, um, we can't overlook the fact that the Taliban's military triumph has overthrown a democratically elected government. So I think it's bad news on many fronts. It's bad news on the international human rights front, and it's bad news for the global security front because the Taliban is in alliance with groups like Al-Qaeda, and it is also reported Islamic State. And um, these apparently were reported as helping in the recent military campaigns. So we can expect that a Taliban-led government will once again host groups that engage in international terrorism, which is bad news. And uh, I think, yeah, it, it, it's it, the other thing we have to take into account here. Um, there is quite a bit of backlash now against not just the Biden administration in the United States, but there's also a growing concern to what extent were Pakistan security services aiding and abetting the Taliban in this recent offensive. The Ta Pakistan has a long time association, their intelligence services with the Taliban. So that, that's another worry. And there's also the prospect of regional upheavals because the Taliban in Pakistan may well see the triumph of the Taliban in uh, Afghanistan as the green light for them to seize power or try to seize power there. And we are talking about a country with nuclear weapons when we talk about Pakistan. So there's some worrying implications here. How does an international involvement that spans the better part of 20 years uh, so abruptly come to an end within the space of, 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 of a week or two? How does this happen so fast? Well, I, I don't think it's happened quite in a week or two. Um, in many respects, if you want to look at the resurgence of the Taliban, you have to look back, I, I think, Sam, to the decision of 2003, when the Bush administration decided to invade Iraq. They directly transferred troops from, Iraq, uh, from Afghanistan to Iraq, and they were totally preoccupied with Iraq. Now, at that stage, the Taliban were on the ropes in 2003. They'd been overthrown and largely dispersed but they were able to regroup. Um, these Taliban fighters are very dedicated. They have a very, if you like, fundamentalist understanding of Islam, which is pretty intolerant, by the way, if you're not a believer. Um, and they have regrouped. But in a sense, the United States, um, I think, got distracted by going after a country or a regime, the Saddam Hussein regime, in Iraq, which had nothing to do with 9-11, instead of consolidating democratic rule or helping to consolidate democratic rule uh, in partnership with the UN in Afghanistan, the Taliban by 2006 had regrouped and had become a potent fighting force again. So there were some mistakes made there on the tactical level. Um, nevertheless, your point, your question is a good one. I mean, the, the United States has pumped in more than $80 billion dollars and there have been NATO, there have been other Western countries, not just the United States on its own. And yet still, 
despite training a force of 300,000 plus, that force wasn't able to stand up to 80,000, probably less well-equipped fighters, but more motivated fighters. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, um, it, you, you literally, it, 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 I, I think there's a number of factors involved in the collapse of the Afghan state army. One is the high level of corruption in Afghanistan. There were reports just a few weeks ago, which were credible, that Afghan state troops were not getting enough food. They were not getting basic support. Uh, some were selling weapons to get food. Um, this is, you know, um, these are basic things which need to be taken care of. And I also was struck, I think, by like many observers, watching um, the now departed president of Afghanistan give a speech in the last 24 hours, just before he fled the power, where he didn't acknowledge the reverses that occurred. And it was almost like he was operating in a parallel universe. And um, he's now said that he had to flee the country to uh, avoid bloodshed but you think to yourself well is that true if the taliban want to carry out bloodshed now they've got complete control of the country they will carry it out and um so yeah i mean i it, it's yeah i i think on balance um the united states has been prepared to have twenty eight thousand troops in south korea for decade after decade because of the threat of north korea and it's also maintained 40,000 or so troops in Germany permanently. Um, you know, you didn't even need a troop presence of that level to keep the Taliban at bay. And uh, I, I think that's something that will be some hard thinking about. I've noticed that some military commentators in the United States are saying that the United States can't necessarily accept this reversal. We'll just have to see you're in the United States at the moment. You'll have a sense of some of the debates going on there. Uh, it'll be an interesting one to watch, but I, I do think the Trump administration made, and, uh, and in a sense, the Biden administration has compounded the error, an error when they signaled in negotiations with the Taliban that they saw an end to the American presence. I mean, you, you don't sort of start a negotiation by saying you're getting out, because what's the point of having a negotiation? What incentive was there for the Taliban to negotiate seriously? And this point was made, you know, recently with regard to the Biden administration, once the Biden administration signaled that it was getting out come what may. Um, then the Taliban thought, well, we don't need to negotiate because the country is going to be ours anyway. So um, there's been some long term factors and there's been some short term factors, which has created this nightmare situation. It's a huge setback for international human rights. It's a huge setback for global security.